Sangeeta, thanks very much for joining us today. What would you say is the most critical problem facing healthcare in India today? I'd really say the biggest one is the lack of facility, just the lack of, uh, of good infrastructure. And then this is compounded by the lack of access, whether it's financial or geographic access, to the infrastructure that exists. Where would you, and is that access uh, sort of the weakest in rural areas, would you say? Is that one of the biggest problems? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. It's and you, I was reading that you are you headed up Apollo Reach. Mm -hmm. uh, can you describe that program for us? Okay, Reach is actually a new model of healthcare delivery that uh, the Apollo team innovated on. It's um, at our 25th anniversary. Um, you know, Dr. Eddie addressed a, a senior group of the hospital XX. And uh, we were in this boardroom, and we thought that he's going to say, you know, good job, guys, you've, you've delivered on my vision. And he actually told us that, um, do you understand that the Apollo Hospitals model is relevant to about 300 to 400 million people? But, you know, 600 million people or a significant number of India's population is getting denied health care, and what are you going to do to change this? So we went back to the drawing board on, you know, innovation, um, clearly in terms of financial access and geographic access. We have worked for the last 10 years on these two fronts of pushing insurance, uh, whether it was our own small insurance that we did in our village, where for one rupee a day or, you know, 365, so it's for less than $10, an individual have, would have access to high-end health care. And we've proved that that model was possible that it was relevant, and based on the learnings of that model, many others have evolved in our country. Today, uh, you know, whether it was the Yashishwini in Karnataka that we continue to administer, whether it was, um, you know, now we've seen Arugyashri in Andhra, where 80 million lives are covered, you see RSPY, so, so financial access is increasing and we're happy for that. We think it's a positive trend, lots more needs to be done, but at least it's a movement in the right direction. The next one we did was telemedicine, because when 80% of the doctors are living in the urban areas and 70% of our population is in the rural, you need to find ways to connect. Technology is affording some solutions. We've tried to use that effectively. The last one, because ultimately, uh, you know, um, we, we strongly believe in M Health and the convergence of healthcare, IT, and the mobile phone. Uh, we, we've tried to drive new models. We're bringing out a lot of innovations. But end of the day, the mobile phone cannot do a bypass surgery or do a hip replacement. So we tried to build on, um, you know, uh, a mechanism or a scheme or a program which takes advanced healthcare facilities into B and C class cities. Uh, we hope that one day we'll be able to do this in every district headquarter so that today, um, the average rural Indian seeking health care travels about 54 kilometers for care. Uh, we want to cut this down significantly by building these models. We know we cannot build for the entire country, but what we have done effectively over the last 27 years is really be a thought leader and a catalyst towards a positive progress and direction. So what REACH Hospital is, is it's um, higher secondary and tertiary care. It's, uh, it's clean, practical, cost-effective environments. Uh, it, uh, we, we re-engineered everything from the air conditioning to the design to the infection control to the doctor's module uh, to the way we interact with patients. We re-engineered that and worked on bringing down the cost per bed uh, by almost 20, 25% and the operating cost by another 15%. Uh, this combination has helped us uh, be able to reach out to a lot more people. So now we have seven hospitals in the REACH model. Uh, three are open. Uh, the next four will open in the next 60 to 90 days. We'll do about 25 of them over the next 18 to 24 months, and then we'll reevaluate the model. So REACH is really our initiative towards rural empowerment and access to quality health care. And do you see one day um, the ability to sort of reach the most remote people? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. But see, the thing is, our, our, our thought process is that um, no single initiative can really solve all the problems. It's a combination. So you put up um, a quality healthcare environment in a rural setting. You put mobile vans around that. You connect the mobile vans through telemedicine. You put te uh, technology to ensure that you've registered these people. You focus a lot on preventive health care. So your cost or the disease burden comes down because you've spent money appropriately on preventive health care. You try to propagate through government agencies a holistic model which looks at clean drinking water, better sanitation, appropriate immunization. So once again, you've impacted the disease burden. Uh, and then you try once more to push a new paradigm, which is that healthcare should not be about episodic treatment of single ailments. It should be about proactively creating positive health in an environment, about stratifying vulnerable groups and going to them before the problem exists. Because if you've had a generation or two generations of diabetes and cardiovascular disease in your family, the likelihood of the kids getting it is a lot more. Is what there, can you do? Is there a huge educational push on, on Apollo's part and other organizations to sort of communicate that to people in remote areas? How is that, how is that knowledge spread, I guess is what I'm asking. Um, I see a few things. One is that, um, you know, in a country like India, there's so much to be done, so many dimensions on which you can do them. So some we do directly. Some we work in propagating thought leadership so that we create one pilot and hopefully others will follow. Three is I think we are fairly active in multiple governing bodies and voices of the with the government. So on the health information side, we have created a framework for uh, a joint task force which is working with the ministry on a health patient India healthcare portal which is a multi-language information portal, which will be launched fairly soon. So we've been the thought leadership behind that. We've worked on content. We've given ideas from our own, uh, like we have a patient portal for our population, Apollo Life. So we've taken those concepts and learnings. We've worked on making it more than just a static content, but connecting that via cell phone, fax, SMS, whatever you can do to make this alive and push into the community. So we've put some of those models out there. I think in the next 12 to 24 months, you'll see some of the impacts of these. Interesting. There's a, it sounds like there's a huge amount of innovation taking place to reach people, to, to educate them. Uh, you know, and very often people, you know, in the West will look at a country like India and say, the healthcare, the healthcare is so poor, it's backward. Um, but it, what I'm hearing is there's probably a lot of lessons that a country like the United States could learn from India in terms of reaching people. You're so right. And I what do you the, think, what are some lessons you think that, that other countries should probably absorb? See, um, I think there are a range of them. So let me go through um, some. One is that if you look at a, from a quality perspective, we've done about 90,000 open heart surgeries, 99.6% success rate. This is, is world class. Then you go one dimension deeper and you say that we want quality health care, but we want it at sustainable costs. And we want equity. We want everyone in society to get it. So what can you do to bring down these costs? We do a significant number of our surgeries as beating heart surgeries. When you do beating heart, um, the skill set of the clinician and the team needs to be far greater. But it brings down the costs of the material input, you don't use an oxygenator, it also reduces the recovery time. So, I mean, this is, there are they, pockets of this type of innovation across our system. And we believe that the healthcare delivery system where uh, the back-end cost of administration, like we do, I mean, it's less than six to seven percent versus about, you know, 25% in, in, in these economies. And, you know, so we understand things like that. And we want to create this convergence of technology, of knowledge, of, of capability to build new models. I, I think that's some of the greatest learning. But having said that, I, I really want to caveat this to say that I believe, uh, despite everything that's going on, that the American healthcare system has some amazing capability. They have taught the rest of the world 
advanced healthcare. The design and the back-end administrative problems should never, uh, you know, kind of make people forget the fact that some amazing medicine is being practiced. Uh, the ability to save lives, to do heroic things, to push research, to create innovation, uh, liver transplant, everything that's happened and everything that the rest of the world is, is, is emulating has emerged out of great institutions in the U.S., and um, our, in India, we're, we're very, at, at Apollo, we're extremely, uh, you know, grateful and we admire the work that's happening in many great American healthcare institutions. I think that the U.S. probably faces a similar situation to India in that, you know, to incent doctors, doctors to move out of large urban areas with large institutions to more rural areas or, or poorer areas, it's a hard thing to do. So how are you... Or, or, or what kinds of incentives um, can the industry offer to medical personnel who are highly trained to move out of urban areas and to move into rural areas to address some health care needs? Because as you said, there is a limit to what technology can do. A cell phone can't actually do an operation. You need qualified people to make the cut and to do the actual surgery. So is there any sort of um, movement or, or activity around generating interest in, in work in rural areas? See, I think one of the big ones is actually by uh, the Ministry and the Medical Council of India to create a new cadre of uh, medical professionals who are um, uh, done medical school within three to four years. So they're, they're trained, uh, their, their costs are lower, and they stay in the rural environment for four to five years. That, I believe, is a big one. One of the other ones which I... I think is is relevant is that you do traveling. So I don't think we can ask um, many people to go in and live in rural environments unless the rural environments have schools, colleges, you know, social infrastructure. But what we can do is, and what we have been doing for the last 27 years is, every weekend, somewhere, you know, in the rural parts of India, will be teams from... Apollo hospitals, Chennai, Hyderabad, Delhi, going out, traveling overnight by train or by car, traveling into rural India, conducting medical camps, operating in theaters over there, or you know, doing consultation and bringing the patients back. So a combination of technology, telemedicine, preventive healthcare, training of the district healthcare workers and their doctors, supporting them by specialist visits as well as teleconsults. It's, it's a combination. No single thing can really solve the entire problem. Uh, but one of the things is that I believe rural India will become, when connected, see, ours is moving into an information society. When connected with the appropriate bandwidth, rural India will become the back office of urban India. When that happens, then the, the economic capability of those environments will improve. When the economic environment improves, the quality of life improves. When that improves, then people move because you have social infrastructure developed. So a combination of the information drive and uh, the insurance which is insurance is very much becoming in India uh, the fuel which pushes the engine of healthcare. So when you put fuel into that engine, you will see more and more infrastructure being developed. So uh, many interesting things on different dimensions happening. I think so. Uh, and, and so entrepreneurial in nature as well. I think so, yeah. So I guess my next question is how much of um, India's healthcare solutions do you think will, will come out of the private sector ultimately as opposed to the public sector? See, today about 80% of uh, healthcare is in the private sector. About 60 to 65% of the beds are in the private sector, but 80% of the care is delivered by the private sector. Um, if you look at the uh, the budget allocation or the spending, the out-of-pocket spending is also approximately only 30 to 40 percent of the budget is, is government-driven. 60 percent of it is, again, uh, private. I think these trends will continue, but what I'm hoping will happen is that there will be a new and interesting uh, and genuine model 
of PPP, which is public-private participation. So far, it's been pockets. I think Apollo did one of you know the first PPPs. We've done quite a few of them. But I believe that when private sector hospitals support government insurance programs effectively in a partnership model, you've worked towards creating a provisioning of care, uh, and the government has worked towards creating a financial access to that care, and this is PPP. But um, even more in the build of infrastructure, because we do need, we need about 100,000 new beds per year for the next eight years to reach WHO's requirement in terms of bed numbers. So um, I think we need to find new models of building. Right now, um, very few hospital groups are economically attractive. And foreign direct investment is going into every other sector in India uh, and not so much into healthcare. So to do that, we need to evolve these new models. Uh, we have to push uh, this whole concept of PPP into uh, newer dimensions. But also, most importantly, I keep bringing this one back up because I truly believe in it. And I think that uh, it's because today's models of healthcare are not the solutions for tomorrow's healthcare scenarios and problems. We need new innovation. And one of them is the ability to do preventive healthcare and predictive healthcare in a whole new way. Riding on this concept of an information society and a connected world in a connected environment uh, will be this ability to tap the capability of the fragmented healthcare system in India or the GP. Uh, very few people know, I mean, when you talk about healthcare in India, you think of Apollo or, you know, the Max or the large institutions or even All India Institute. But actually, 70% of Indian hospitals are less than 50 beds. So how do you tap that entrepreneurship of the individual doctor to really stay relevant, to increase the quality of care that he does, and create uh, more effective integrative programs? So does the AIDS and the TB and the malaria and the immunization programs of the government, or even the moves towards reducing maternal mortality, do they tap private healthcare in the most appropriate way? Those are the type of interesting new PPP models that I think we will be pushing and uh, that I hope will really make an impact on positive health indices. Great. Thanks very much for talking with us today. Thank you. Appreciate it was a pleasure. Bye.